Hello, my lovely Minjins. This is Minji from Minji Teaches Korean. In this series, I'm going to teach you how to read and write the Korean alphabet, Hangul. Yay! <laughs> So if you like to learn Korean language or if you are trying to start learning Korean language, I would say memorizing Hangul is essential. Well, I've got many messages that they would like to speak Korean language but do not really know where to start. I would say Hangul should be the first step when it comes to learning Korean language. It is because just like English has a writing system called the alphabet, Korean language also does, and it represents Korean language's characteristic very well. It perfectly matches because that's how it was created. I will mention about that a few minutes later, but yeah, reading Korean words with romanization, it actually just sucks. And it'll be not accurate in many, many cases, and it's too confusing. So do not rely on it too much, and the sooner the better, learn Hangul. Because once you memorize Hangul, you'll be able to read almost every sentence or even paragraph in Korean language. I have even seen people who mastered Hangul within two hours, because it is very easy and intuitive to learn, so I hope you are not too afraid of learning it. I'm going to teach you Korean alphabet step by step, one by one in this series. I guarantee you will read everything perfectly at the end of this series. All right, let's get started. Before getting into learning Hangul deeply, let me talk about a little story about Hangul and some facts about it as a warm-up session. Have you guys ever heard of how Hangul was created? Yes or no? It was actually created by King Sejong in 1443. You can see him in the Manonbil or in the Gwanghamun Square in Seoul. Anyway, um, before the creation of Hangul, Koreans used to use Chinese writing system Hanja because at the time, there was no way to notate or transcribe Korean language. However, because of the fundamental differences between Korean and Chinese languages, and also a lot of characters, Chinese characters needed to be learned. Many, many lower class Koreans had neither time nor opportunity to learn them. Therefore, they couldn't even understand any announcement from the government because everything was written in Hanja. Imagine how strong it was. King Sejong thought that it was very pitiful and it eventually led him to do something for the common people, which was making Hange. In other words, in order to promote literacy among the common people, King Sejong, he was actually the fourth king of the Joseon dynasty, by the way, he created a new alphabet called Hange in 1443. And three years after, 1446, right? 1446년, he promulgated Korean alphabet, Hangul. He was like, hey, listen up, I've created a new alphabet called Hangul, why don't you guys use this? Of course, this was not his way of speaking, I'm just saying. But yeah, this is how it was created. And it is known that he and his scholars observed how humans' vocal organs worked when pronouncing Korean language's sound. And they try to symbolize it into every single Hangul letter. They try to apply principle of pronunciation to it. You might notice from this story, Hangul is very suitable for representing or dictating Korean language. So it will be way easier to read the Korean words with Hangul rather than with romanization. Just forget about it and learn Hangul. Then move on to the next. I would like to let you know some facts that are very important that you have to know. So first of all, Hangul consists of 19 consonants and 21 vowels. I know it's a lot, but don't worry. I will kind of narrow it down to make it easier to memorize in this series. What is more important here is this. 
Korean consonants or vowels, they have to be grouped into like a square instead of being written sequentially. For example, in English, you can write several consonants consecutively at the first in a syllable, right? As in school or sykes. And the same goes for several consonants at the end, as in crisps. But in Korean, you cannot really list several consonants at the first or at the end in a syllable. For example, school is 학교, by the way. 학교. 학교, but we do not really write it down like 하, 기억, and 교. We do not write it down like this. Basically, all Korean letters, they have to be grouped into syllabic blocks. And there are certain rules regarding how they would combine. So we need to follow it. First one is C plus V. Consonant plus vowel. Let me raise this. Consonant plus vowel. It can be either this way or this way. So first rule is consonant plus vowel. Consonant plus vowel. It can be either this way or this way. For example, let me write down a word for you. Na and no. So this one is consonant. We are going to learn about this in the next series. Anyway, this is consonant and this is vowel. So you can write it down like this. A vowel is followed after a consonant. It is written right next to it, right? It means I in informal language. And no, you can also write it down like this. No, it means or or paddle. It is written right below of consonant, right? And the next way is C, V, C. Let me write it down for you. It can be either C, V, C this way or C, V, C. It can be either this way or this way. So for example, so just like this, Kang. Consonant, vowel, consonant, and consonant, vowel, consonant. Kang means river and gong means a ball. And in this case, there is an ending sound, right? Ending consonant, we call it patin. We're going to learn about this in the next series. But yeah, you can write it down either this way or this way. and they all look like a square, right? Syllabic blocks. So you need to understand this fundamental combination rule and I will show you many different Korean words so that you can naturally observe this rule. So don't worry. And the next thing that I would like to let you know is the order of writing. For example, Korean language is 한국어. 한국어 might be your goal, right? 한국어. It looks like this, 한국어. And you might notice I just wrote this down like from left to right, left to right, and from up to down, right? Left to right, up to down, left to right, up to down, from left to right, dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Um, this is not the most essential thing. Just because you didn't follow the rule and somehow you wrote down this vowel like, I don't know, like this way, you wouldn't fail on your Korean exam because everybody understands you are a beginner. So it is okay, but we always write down Korean sentences from left to right. And just like I told you, Korean consonants and vowels, they have to be grouped in a perfect square shape. So it is actually way easier for you to write down Korean words or Korean sentences under this rule. From left to right and from up to down.
and especially if you would like to have a fancy and nice handwriting I recommend you to follow this rule I am going to show you my handwritings as much as I can in this series I know it sounds there are a lot of rules regarding Hangul but you don't have to memorize it all at once I hope you are just not freaking out I will show you my handwritings so that it could be a good reference you know the most important thing is to learn it in a fun and easy way so I will help you to memorize them easier in this series that's it for today in the next following videos you will be able to learn all the different Korean consonants so I'll see you guys in the next time thanks for watching and if you like this video please click the like button and if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel please subscribe then 안녕